Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Captures here and today I have a brand new tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own custom Pokemon Gigantamax card from scratch. If you find this video helpful, please click that subscribe button and while you're at it, please hit the like button too. To start the video off, scroll on down to the video description, hit that show more button and open the below links in new tabs. This can be done by hitting the scroll button or by right clicking and clicking on open in new tab. Once all the tabs are open, click into the first tab. This tab is the blank VMAX card layout that I created for this video. This will be used as our VMAX card template. Click that download button. While downloading, click the next tab, which is the sun and moon resource sheet. Big shout out to Ashfeld101 for providing DeviantArt with this awesome resource. He does some absolutely amazing work, so you should definitely check out his DeviantArt channel. Click the download button to download the Sun and Moon resource pack. Next up, we'll be downloading the fonts that we'll be using throughout this tutorial. Click on the next tab, which will be the Gil Sands font. Scroll down a little bit and click on the download button again. You may need to type in a captcha. Just like with the previous font, you'll also need to download the Gil Sands Condensed Bold font also. Finally, we'll be downloading some brushes that we'll be using throughout the tutorial as well. The last download that we have to do is a splatter brush download, which I'm going to get from the Adobe website, which is also a free resource that they provide you with. Your front screen may look a little bit different to what mine does now. You will need to log in to get here. If you are unable to log in, you can find other spatter or splatter brushes on other websites. Now that everything's been downloaded, click into your download folder. I highly recommend to move all the resources in one spot like I'm doing now. The next step you want to do before starting is right click on the free smoke brushes zip folder and click on extract all. Once extracted, go back to your resource folder. Throughout this video, I'll be using Photoshop to show you how to design your own card. However, there are plenty of other programs that you could potentially use. To start off, you want to right click on the Pokemon VMAX Gigantamax image that you downloaded. Right click on it and open with Photoshop or any other image editing software. This resource page is where we're going to be doing all the design works and will act as our top layer on our Pokemon card. The next step is to go back into the resource folder and right click the Pokemon TCG Sun and Moon resource pack. Right click it and open with Photoshop once again. Move your mouse to the bottom right hand corner and open up a new layer. Once the new layer has been opened, drag it to the very bottom and create a grey filled rectangle. This will help with seeing the white text that you can't see on a blank background. The next step will be installing the two brushes that we downloaded, as well as both the fonts. To do this, go back into the resource folder and double click on the unzipped smoke brush folder. You will then double click on the smoke brush itself, which will automatically open up Photoshop again. This will mean that the brush has been downloaded. You then want to click back into the resource folder and do the exact same thing with the spatter brush by double clicking it and again Photoshop will open. From this point, if you click on the paint brush icon, scroll down to the very bottom and you should see two newly installed folders. To install the fonts, yet again go back into the resource folder and double click on each of the fonts. Click on the install button which will then install the fonts to Photoshop. You can then check this by going back into Photoshop, clicking on the typing icon and going up to the top font menu. Scroll down to the G area and you will find the Gil Sands font as well as the Gil Sands condensed font. These will both be used throughout the video. Now that everything's been installed, it's time to select a Pokemon. You can either draw up the Pokemon yourself or find an image on the internet. 
This will be used as the centerpiece to the card you're creating. A handy tip is looking for a decent sized image as well as using a PNG image. If you're looking on Google, type in the Pokemon's name followed by PNG. This will mean that the background image is transparent and will be easier to use on programs like Photoshop. If you don't want to use a transparent image, that's fine. However, you will need to use the lasso tool and get rid of any background there is in that Pokemon's image. Once you have the image installed, bring the image to the resource folder. That way there you've got everything at once. For the purpose of this tutorial, I've pre-made a Charizard PNG image that I'll be using throughout this video. Now that the image of the Pokemon is in your resource folder, again right click it and open with Photoshop. With this image opened, you want to drag layer 0 over to our VMAX card. Now that layer 0 has moved into our VMAX card resource, you can see that the image has shrunk a little bit. I'm just going to resize the image to where I'm happy with it. Now that the image has been resized and I'm happy with its positioning, just click on the tick icon up the top. Now that it's in position, go to the layer, double click on it and rename it to the Pokemon's name. This will help by knowing what your actual layers are. We don't actually need to see the Pokemon layer at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click off the eye icon, which means we will no longer be able to see the Pokemon. This is Charizard in my case. Once that's been done, select layer zero and click on the magic wand icon. You then want to click on the black border, hold in the shift key and click on the opposite side black border as well. This will mean that both black borders have been selected. You then want to right click the black border and select layer via cut. As you can see, this has now separated the layers of the original VMAX parts, as well as the black border. You then want to rename both of these layers. The next step is to create a background layer. To do this, create a new layer and drag it and drop it all the way to the very bottom of your other layers. Once you've renamed it to background, you want to select the rectangle tool like you did earlier and cover the entire area in one rectangle. You then want to double click away from where it says background but still within the box. This will open up the layer style selection tools. You want to look for the gradient overlay option. When you click into it, it should look something very similar to what my screen does. What you want to do is create multiple different colors in the gradient to make your background. To do this, double click on the square icon where I have. This will open up the color selection menu. Once you've chosen the desired color and you wish to create more colors, all you need to do is click on other ends of the spectrum, which will create new squares to change colors. You want to end up with around about four to six different color tones. There's no real right or wrong way to do this. It's more personal preference. Some Pokemon will work better with other backgrounds than what I'm choosing. Um, I just really like the kind of color tones that I've selected for my Charizard. Once these have been selected, you can click on the OK icon. From here, you can also change the style if you like. There is a variety of different styles that you can do. I usually recommend sticking with either linear or angle. The good thing about angle is that you can also play around with the angle's degree, which means you can get a lot of variation and a lot of different tones going through your background with different angles. Once you're happy with your background, click on the OK icon yet again. You can now also click on the visible icon so you can see your Pokemon again. If your background doesn't 100% work with your Pokemon, this is a good time to change your background to make it work. I've also moved the layers so that the V Max layer is up the very top, but my Pokemon, my Charizard in this case, is sitting in between the V Max layer, but it's on top of the card border. 
As you can see, all the VMAX text and bits and pieces are above the Charizard layer. However, Charizard himself is above the black border layer, which means that Charizard's sitting on top of the black border, which looks good, and it's not interfering with all the VMAX card details. For the next step, we need to create a new layer and move the layer in between the Pokemon layer, Charizard in this case, and the black border layer. At this point, you also want to make the Pokemon layer invisible again. Make sure you select back onto the new layer and rename it to Splatter. You then want to click on the paintbrush icon, scroll up to the top left paintbrush menu, and scroll all the way to the bottom until you see the Spatter brush list. You then want to open up the Spatter folder, scroll down until you hit the dot brush and click on it. I'm also just going to increase the sizing a little bit, but this is completely your choice. At this point in the video, this is where you have your own design input. You can use as many dots as you like, as much different colors as you want. It is completely your choice. Um, I'm just going to speed through this a little bit so that you can see what I've done. However, like I said earlier, this is 100% your choice. If you want to have 30 different colors in there, you can. Um, I'm pretty basic and going to keep it with a lot of various color tones that work well within the background but you can do a lot of good contrasting colors it is a hundred percent your choice all you want to do throughout this process is try to get some good coverage so just click on dots move the mouse around try to get into as many spaces as possible once you're happy with all the dots that you've placed click on the selection menu again and move down to dusty bits it's right underneath dots I do recommend you do dusty bits. It's just a little bit finer um, dots that are going through it. And I think you get some really good coverage out of this and it makes it look very similar to what the real VMAX cards are like. Once you've added the dusty bits, I also recommend adding just a little bit of the dampy drips. Um, just do that as a variance or in variations of different areas on the card. I really stick, really recommend sticking with uh, blacks and whites on this. However, you can use some different colors as well, like I have. Um, just try not to go too far with this because if you do a lot of it, it can look a little bit messy. Um, so I'm only doing a few bits and pieces here and there. At this point in the video, as you can see, I'm also changing the background gradient again. I wasn't 100% satisfied with the two purpley colors, so I've changed it again to that kind of reddish pinkish color, um, which I personally think works a lot better. Now that I'm happy with my background again, I'm going to create another new layer, and I'm just gonna name it Swirls. This layer is also going to sit above the card border layer. I'm then going to click on the brush icon again, scroll up to the top menu, and click on the smoke brushes. Again, with this part of the video, it is completely your choice. You can put as little or as many swirls as you like. I'm going to do a fair few with a bit of a variation in colour going through them. Uh, but again, this is 100% your choice. Just like I'm doing, feel free to experiment with the different types of brushes and just select them from the menu. This next step is completely optional, but what I'm going to do is create another new layer again. Name it Swirls 2, and I'm just going to reduce the opacity this time. Um, just so that it's not as kind of a deep colouring. Now that I'm happy with the second lot of swirls in, I'm going to create another new layer yet again. I'm going to call this one Swirls Above, and I'm actually going to move this layer above our Pokemon layer. So Charizard in this case, and the layer is going to be above him. For the next step, it might take a little bit of trial and error. I'm just going to carefully add a few different types of swirls to the front of the card. That way then it kind of blends in and doesn't just look like Charizard's in the background and it looks like he's in the middle getting Gigantamax. Now that I'm happy with the swirls above layer, I'm just going to create another new layer and call it Splatter Above. And we're just going to essentially do the same thing with the swirls but with the splatter brush this time instead. With this again, it's really customizable so 
do whatever you kind of please. I don't recommend doing a whole lot to it at this point. I just recommend doing a few splatters here and there, especially around the sides and corners, um, just to make it look more like a VMAX card. With the final part to the background of this video, where we're actually doing the design elements of the card, I'm just going to create one more new layer, bring it down to the very bottom, just above the card border layer, and all I'm going to do is name it Fill. From this point here, I'm just going to go back into the brush icon, select the sizing around about 40 to 50 pixels roughly, and I'm just going to try filling in some of the areas where the black sits that I don't really want to see too much. Again, you can do this as little or as much as you like. To be honest, it's another step that you could probably skip if you didn't want to. I just don't like seeing a whole bunch of the black on the card, and this step helps get rid of it. And that's the background completely finished, so the next step will be to add the card moves, the name of the Pokemon, the energies, etc. Before I start this, I'm just going to create a new layer and name it text. I'm then going to drag the layer second to the top, only below the VMAX card itself. Now before starting anything, what I'm going to quickly do is just Google search Pokemon VMAX Gigantamax card. What we're going to do with this is we're just going to paste it onto our last text layer. And we're just going to use this as a reference point so that we can see the positioning of the moves and all the energies, etc. As you can see, I've just moved it to the top left hand side just so that it's out of the way but we can still see it. From here, it's finally time to add some typing into your Pokemon card. What we're going to do is type in our Pokemon's name. To do this, we're going to need to use a black text as well as the Gil Sans condensed font. When you're happy with the font, just resize it and make sure that it's sitting in the correct spot. You are then going to double click where the text layer is, so that way we can add the white outline to the text. To do this, you want to add a stroke to the text, so click on the stroke. You want it to be about 2 pixels wide on the outside layer in a white colour. Once you've done this, click OK. Just like we did before, we're going to create another text layer and we're just going to write evolves from Pokemon name. We are then going to resize it so that we're happy with the positioning. Try to use the real Pokemon card as a reference point. Once we're happy with everything, we're going to zoom in to where it says VMAX. And we're just going to use the magic wand tool again. And we are going to select all the black parts on the V of VMAX. We are then going to right click on the selected area and layer via copy. We are then going to move this copied layer to where our Pokemon name is on the bottom and resize it so that it's a little V at the end of the Pokemon's name. The next step is to go back into the TCG resource page and choose your Pokemon's HP amount. For Charizard being not as bulky as what the Snorlax is, I'd say I'm going to go around about the 300 HP mark. To do this, all I'm going to do is select the box tool and layer via copy yet again, drag and drop the layers from the TCG resource page to our VMAX card. A little tip is to make sure you've selected the original layer of the TCG resource and not one of the layers that you've copied. You will also see with the HP amount, um, as well as the actual number, you will actually have to add a black stroke to it. To do this, all you have to do is, just like we did with our Pokemon's name, you double click on the layer icon, and you just click on the stroke, and you just change it from a white to a black. The next step is a lot of cutting and pasting, so I will speed it up a bit. Now that I'm happy with the HP that I've dragged and dropped in, as well as the 300, I'm just going to hold the shift key and select both the HP layer as well as the 300 layer. I'm going to right click and click on merge layers. This means that both layers have become one and therefore can both be moved at the same time. 
For the next step, we're going to go back into the TCG layer, copy a energy symbol, whatever the energy of your Pokemon is, and we're just going to drag and drop it in place. We're going to use a fair few energies from this point, and all you're gonna do is drag them in from the TCG resources page to the VMAX card, and all we're gonna do is position them accordingly. You might need to do a little bit of research just to know the Pokemon typing as well as its weaknesses. Um, all the resources are in the TCG resource page, and all you need to do is continue to drag and drop the layers that you need. Before I forget, the other step as well is to bring in a little image of our Pokemon. So all I'm going to do is just jump back on Google. I'm just going to type in Charizard PNG for this situation. And I'm just going to copy an image that I think will look good in the top left hand corner uh, where we've got the Evolves from Pokemon. If it comes with a black background, all you need to do is use the Magic Wand tool again. Hold the Shift key in, select all the black spots and delete it. You don't need to be too pedantic at this point because the image is going to be that small that you probably won't even see a lot of it. I've also just noticed that my VMAX is a little bit further away from the Pokemon name as it should be. So all I'm going to do is select the VMAX layer, use the lasso tool and cut around the VMAX and I'm just going to bring it in a little bit. So just move it more towards the Pokemon name and then I'm just going to re-merge the layers again. For the next step, I'm not going to go into too much details, but I'm just going to add the weakness of the Pokemon in. All I'm going to do is drag and drop a Water Energy because it's Charizard's opposing type, and the Times 2 symbol, and we're just going to create an overlay as well. So very similar to what we did with the Stroke, but click on Color Overlay, just like before with the Gradient Overlay, but this time we're clicking Color Overlay. We're just going to make the color overlay white because that is what it is in the GMAX card that we're using as a reference for. And that way then it's all in consistency. You will need to do a bit of resizing with the energies to make sure the sizes are similar to the real cards. For the next step, just add in a retreat cost, whatever you think is right. Try to be a bit realistic in terms of what the retreat cost would be of a specific card. And just like we did before, we're just going to drag and drop it into the VMAX file. I've just used the water energy just to help with sizing, and I'm just going to move it back into the retreat cost area. Try also to keep all your layers named correctly. I'm just going to go through and just quickly touch up my layers now. Next up, you've just got to add a symbol. Now, all Gigantamax cards will be a star rare. Um, and you also just want to add the number of the cards that you've made. Now, I've made three, so I'm just going to write it in as 003. A lot of Pokemon cards have out of a certain number if you're going to make a set. But for me, in this case, I'm just going to leave it as 003 because that's what I'm up to. Try also to resize the text so that it's the same size as the star or thereabout. You may also need to add a stroke to this just like I have. At this point you need to get your creative hats on because we're going to come up with some Pokemon moves. Once you've moved the energies from the TCG resource file to the VMAX file, uh, all you're going to do is position them accordingly so that they're similar to where the reference card energies are. Now again for the move name what you want to use is the Gil Sands condensed font. You then want to type in the move's name and just readjust it to the correct sizing. You will also need to add a stroke for this font. Also, instead of dragging multiple energies across, you can always just right click and duplicate the layer, or otherwise you can just use Ctrl C and Ctrl V while you're using the same layer that the energy's on. Now I'm going to use 80 attack power with a plus symbol and that pretty much just means that the move is going to do 80 damage plus it has an added side effect. Now to add a side effect what you're going to need to do is just click on the regular Gil Sans font and underneath the move name all you're going to do is type in what the added effect is. So mine in this case is going to be this attack does 30 additional damage to each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Now if you are going to add one of these moves in, the text should start just underneath the first energy symbol. 
use a real Pokemon card as a reference point. Try not to make anything too ridiculous as well. At the end of the day, you do want the Pokemon cards to look and feel realistic. You will again also need to add a white stroke to this text. Now at this point, if you are going to create another move like I'm going to do for the purpose of this video, all I'm going to do is shift and click on the energies as well as the move name and the attack power. And we're just going to duplicate the layers. And this will just speed in up the process and make things a little bit easier due to already having all the font sizing, etc. And what we're going to do is we're just going to reduce the amount of energy. So I'm not going to need two moves that are three energy each. So I'm just going to reduce one energy and make an attack that is a pretty basic attack, but is only requiring two energy points. And once you've added all your moves in, that is pretty much the end of the design point of this video. You've pretty much successfully created your own Pokemon card at this point. I do recommend saving a Photoshop file or whatever program you're using file as well as a JPEG. That way, if you did want to make any changes, you can. For this next step, I'm going to show you how to make a physical copy of your actual card. Okay, so once you're 100% happy with everything, what you're going to do is just go over to the bottom right where your layers are. You're just going to right click any of the layers that isn't a text layer and merge visible. Now that will then make all the layers into one specific layer. What you then want to do is go into file and open up a new page and you want this page to be an A4 so you might need to click into print and then select the A4 and you want it to be portrait. Once opened all you're going to do is drag your Pokemon card over to this new Photoshop page or whatever program you're using and you just want to adjust the sizing so and just can position it so that you can fit two cards per row. You should be able to print off about eight cards total. You may need to play with the sizing a little bit. The sizing on this will never be 100% because they're all slightly different, but it should be pretty close. Um, you may need to just adjust the size to make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Once you're completely happy with the sizing, all you want to do is Control C or copy it and paste it in. If you are planning on doing a holo card, you will need to change the opacities a little bit. Um, if you're not doing a holo, you can leave the opacity at 100%. Otherwise, just change the opacity to 90 and 80 and 70. And the reason I'm saying 90, 80 or 70 is because every printer prints slightly differently. Uh, a 70 may work really well with you. A 90 may be too dark and you might not be able to tell it's a holo. So that's the reason why I'm saying go multiple different opacities. Now, if you are planning on making a holo card like I am, you will need to find somewhere that prints on transparent paper. Now, what this pretty much means is all the white you see in the background image will not be there. Uh, when you print it, it will just be a clear piece of paper with the image printed over the face of it. Now, if you are planning on doing a hollow, you will 100% need to use that specific type of paper. If you're not planning on doing a hollow and you're just planning on making a normal card, you can pretty much use any type of paper. Once you're happy with everything, just click the File and Save As button. You want to save this as a PNG file if you are going to use a holographic. A normal JPEG will be fine if you are planning on making a normal card. Okay, now you will need a few more things to make a physical copy of a card. You will need a real Pokemon holographic or reverse holo card. You'll need to use some nail polish remover and some makeup pads. What you're going to do is you're just going to open the cap of the nail polish remover, pour a little bit onto the makeup pad, and you're just going to pretty much rub the face of the card. Now try not to get any at the back. Um, it actually comes off pretty easily. You might just need to do a bit of a scrub to it. Uh, try not to get any of the acetone on the edges of the paper like I am. What I found is that the paper will actually soak in the acetone uh, and that could actually damage the back of your card a little bit. Once it has been completely cleaned, you are pretty much finished with that step. Just wait for the acetone to dry and take the card outside.
For this next step, you will need to get some adhesive spray. Um, you can usually get this from pretty much any shop that sells either paper or is a hardware supply store. Try to go quite lightly with it. Don't do what I did just then and accidentally put a little bit too much glue in one area. Um, it kind of splotted because I didn't shake the can well enough, but either way, it actually turned out okay. And what you do is you just want to get the translucent image um, and pretty much just stick it over the face of it. Try to get as close to the corners as possible, but as you can imagine, with... Um, with the sizing, like I did say, it's never 100%. So if that is the case, you can always just trim around it a little bit. Here are my finished versions. So I've got three cards that I made up. That there is the standard card. That was just with normal plain white paper um, on a Pokemon card. The next image is of the hollow variant that I made. Um, which was the card that I showed throughout this video. Uh, and finally, we've got a Toxtricity G -max, a VMAX card that I made as well um, that I kind of designed. That was the first card that I designed and I thought I'd just add it to the video because I wanted to make a physical copy of it. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it now. I hope you really enjoyed the video. I hope you were able to make your own cool Pokemon cards. And that is pretty much me done. If you were able to successfully make your own Pokemon card and you really enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you were able to give me a like and maybe even a subscribe. Uh, that way then I can continue to post good content that I know that people will enjoy. Anyway guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching this far in. If you did have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Finally, I'd love to see what my viewers are actually creating. So if you have made a card, please feel free to comment or post it into one of my socials, which are below. I'd really love to see them. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Peace out.